Welcome drone video fans. In uh, this video we're going to take a look at the uh, Grand River which uh, was flooding uh, over this past couple of weeks when we had uh, a lot of rain. Um, initially I went out uh, on uh, Sunday the 7th and uh, looked at the river and it was uh, eight, 8 to 10 feet over flood stage. So I decided to uh, go out and shoot and I shot this video on the uh, ninth a couple of days later. It was already down to only uh, four or five feet above flood stage. But uh, we got plenty of video using the uh, DJI Phantom 3 Advanced uh, UAV. And so we drove to a spot that is uh, equidistant between right on the border actually of uh, Lake County and Ashtabula County. There's a big steel bridge there and we took off from there after uh, finally getting the compass to calibrate because of all the steel around there we had to actually get off the bridge. Took off and uh, dropped down here uh, about five feet above the water level and uh, started heading upstream. Now I shot enough video uh, on this day going both upstream and downstream a little over a thousand feet each way uh, to have enough video to produce uh, uh, two actual videos. So we're going to do uh, part one here today going upstream uh, that is against the current. Um, by looking at the current you can see eddies and uh, you know little ripples and so on and so forth in the water and on the edges you can see you know trees that are uh, have water right up to the up up to the trees. Normally, the the water doesn't come anywhere near those trees. And if you've watched any of my other uh, videos of the Grand River, um, mostly you would find those um, in the covered bridges of Ashtabula County series or under the um, aerial videography videos of uh, showing different rivers. But normally, this river does not run very fast like this. As a matter of fact, it runs so slow that it's it's usually perfectly clear and you can see see the uh, the the uh, bottom of the river uh, very easily. Here you can see some you know the, the, again the ripples in uh, in the water uh, how fast it's running and um, uh, in, by looking at my flight data later on after I got home uh, we at a certain point up here we turn around after we get I don't know about 1100 feet out away from from the bridge we turn around and start heading back I could I knew that I was flying at about 9 or 9.1 miles per hour and uh, I was staying up uh, even with the uh, with the speed of the water so uh, I figured or the water was going maybe a little bit faster than me so I figured that the water, the, the speed of the, of the river was somewhere between 9 and 10 miles an hour. Now, according to, you know, all the weather stations that I watch on TV when, when there's flooding, um, they always say that, you know, the power of water is very strong. Here we're doing a nice, actually a 540. We're going to go 360 all the way around and then another 180 and and hit start heading back towards the bridge which you can see just there in the distance about 1100 feet away um, and again you can see the turbulent water running underneath it and it's very muddy and silty due to all the stuff that's picked up but uh, at any rate uh, uh, the the waters were, were were running this you know this fast and and uh, they say that you know if the water is only like one foot high and it's running three or four miles an hour you would not be able to stand up while the water here is several feet deep and it's going between nine and ten miles an hour so there was no way that uh, you would be able to stand in this uh, in this river as it's as it's moving um, and uh, this is only uh, I think my second or third uh, shoot of the year so I was a little apprehens apprehensive of uh, you know flying low against uh, over this flowing water I turned off the uh, visual positioning system this particular uh, UAV or drone or quadcopter however you want to call it 
has a vision positioning system on the bottom to help it maintain stability but you know frequently when you fly over water that gets upset by the reflections and glares and so so on of the of the water so um, the manufacturer usually or recommends that when you fly over water to turn that off so we turn that off and we usually turn that off whenever I'm flying over uh, you know any kind of a body of water whether it's a river like this one here or even just a small stream or, or Lake Erie which I've flown over several times so we're, we're heading back here and you can see that even though I'm going 9.1 miles an hour according to my flight log data the water is actually outpacing me so uh, that again that kind of gives you an idea of how fast the uh, river is running and uh, normally uh, this river is probably five to ten feet in on either side uh, of the banks where you see it right now so it's nowhere near as wide as this so this is you know quite unusual and I've I've never actually been down here actually there were a couple of the covered bridges um, that I'm that I shot um, were uh, damaged and or had to be moved or uh, vastly repaired because this river uh, as you can see it when it overflows at banks it, it can wipe out a lot of property and um, for example uh, in my covered bridges uh, videos there's one on the uh, Harpers Field Bridge and uh, the initial uh, 90 or 100 feet of that bridge had to be rebuilt because it, it got wiped out by a, a flood that was even worse than this one. We were coming about a bunch of uh, uh, dead or trees or driftwood or whatever that's piled up against the the uh, center support of this uh, uh, steel bridge. Again, this this bridge uh, that goes over the river here is is uh, made from all steel beams and and uh, whatnot and uh, supported by concrete on either side. Here we're turning up. This area here is never underwater. This should be all land over there. You can see these trees sort of out on an island uh, they shouldn't actually be that way there should be there should be land all the way across to the other side and that's so unusual that I, I decided to take a quick trip up uh, this little uh, part where it, it uh, overflowed and and uh, you know uh, kind of uh, inundated the, the uh, trees there and you can see some uh, dead trees uh, uh, sticking up out of the water. I imagine that some of these trees um, that we, that I see uh, along the shore, and you'll you see some of these if you pay attention. The, they look uh, a lot of the trees are green and showing signs of life, but a lot of other trees are are look kind of looking dead. And I'm wondering if that's not being caused by uh, the flooding. Uh, you know the there's too much water on the root system or, or something like that and causes them to flood but um, for one reason or another the, the there's a lot of uh, trees and we'll be coming up here as so you can see me standing up there on the bridge if you look real close um, uh, sort of almost in the middle middle of the picture looking through a, an archway on on the bridge uh, actually looking at my uh, Nvidia 8 inch tablet to uh, guide my flying as uh, I'm doing this shoot. So here we're getting close to the bridge again and and we can see some of that uh, dead driftwood that is piled up alongside the uh, the pilings of the uh, of the bridge and we're turning around and facing back upstream here and gonna start rising up to get back up onto the uh, bridge itself and maybe take a quick look at the bridge. Um, when I came down here and while I was doing a site evaluation uh, before I started flying I noticed there was a guy working on an alarm system which you'll see here uh, shortly as we get up high enough uh, you'll see over there in the extreme upper right or I'm sorry upper left hand corner there's a white alarm that's one of those alarms that are so loud that they <laughs> make you deaf and they're for, for therefore weather situations or and there's a you know this this particular area falls within the, the radius of the Perry nuclear power plant warning area so that alarm is there and it's very loud and it's supposed to alert 
people for weather or for emer you know some kind of emergencies. Anyways, you see a little white truck there at the end of the bridge, and that was a, a county engineer working on that alarm system. And he, I stopped and talked with him, and he says, "Oh, we we come out here and." and work on this alarm once a year just for general maintenance and he says by the way I'm gonna set it off here and uh, you know as soon as I get done and and wanna test it and um, fortunately didn't do it while I was doing my upstream uh, shoot but uh, after I'd landed put it in another battery and you know, we're, we're turning down we're looking to the west here and we're looking downstream um, but uh, after I landed uh, and uh, started shooting uh, downstream uh, the alarm did go off. I don't know how many of you have uh, those kind of alarms, weather alarms or emergency alarms in your area but it was so loud that uh, I thought I was gonna jump off the bridge. Uh, <laughs> it was really loud. Uh, we're, I'm flying over the, the top of myself there and you can see my uh, my little white car in the, in the distance. Um, we uh, turn around here and of course uh, I was getting ready to land and just as I was getting ready to land here comes a uh, car along the uh, bridge. Anyways we do a lot of uh, uh, nature uh, videos like this and we're going to be doing a follow up to this one showing uh, downstream so stop back again leave a comment subscribe uh, recommend the video to others and uh, thanks for uh, watching this one and and stop back again. We appreciate uh, people when they uh, watch and uh, leave leave a comment. Stop again.